Hello, everyone. Welcome to Fabrica Benedicta. My name is Ken Henderson. And today on our workshop wisdom, I have some tips and tricks utilizing CA glue, tape, double-sided tape, and sandpaper. So the first thing I want to show you is how we could take these items right here and make them into various sanding blocks. So I've already made one here. I like to have small blocks as well as larger blocks, but larger blocks you can buy, not always buy smaller blocks. And these are good for getting into small places, like, you know, getting into places like this. Rather than using a nice big block, you can use this. Or something like this. You know, I'm going to say in a smaller piece. So I often take my, my old, maybe used sandpaper and use to make them, to make sanding blocks out of them. I'm also going to make a sanding block out of this. So we're going to utilize the, uh, the double sticky sided tape. So I've already got some double sticky on this. And what I'm going to do is show you how that works. All right. So we got my piece of blue painter's tape here. And I'm not going to go all the way the whole length of this. I'm going to just put it somewhere right in there. Okay. Take my knife and cut it off. Just like that. And I'm like that. Pull off the tape. All right, so I've got painter tape on this side. And then I can take my piece here and I can place it so I don't want the, I don't want the double sided sticky to hit the wood. Um, so I'm going to just go just shy of the edge there. And I'm just going to take this and place it. Get my stuff out of the way here. Place it there out of the way. Just like that, so I'm, and then I'm going to take and cut the sandpaper away, just like this, and just like this. All right. Okay. There we go. All right. So now I have sandpaper stuck to this. I'm going to go ahead and trim that off. It's kind of flappy. All right. So now I want to be able to use this to get into sharp, tiny places. All right. So I can go ahead and Get myself a penny sole and edge here. And let's just go ahead and, and I do not have to be precise on this. Basically, I'm going to go and just take a piece off of it like this. All right. Give myself a kind of a knife edge. I could go over to the saw and saw this off. But I can also just use my utility knife. Keep your fingers out of the way. It's a quarter inch ply, so it's not a big deal to cut through. And this blade is about done anyway, so I can change it out. All right. So now I've got a pointed edge that I can get into sand things. So, for instance, I could have done that on the other side, I guess. Um, <laughs> I would like to do it like that. I'm left, I'm right-handed. But um, I can take this now and go in and sand edging like this, get into tight spots um, with that point, right? So if I want to go in and, for instance, I do have some spots here. I'm working on the state and the nail gun holder, and I do have some spots in here where I can 
Now, I might see it. There's some edges there that need a little help. They didn't quite get cut all the way out, so I can take this little piece right here. I could use a file, or I can use my sandpaper here on my little sandy block, and I can sand that out, which is very helpful. So I can move that out of the way so that my pieces of wood will go in there smoother, open it up just a little bit, right? All right. So you kind of get the idea. There's a spot. And I will do this one. I mean, this is like a tool you can make on the spot. So there's one with a pointed edge. There's just a, a long sanding block I like to use. I have leftover pieces from when I make French cleats. And these are nice because I can hold them. I can hold them really easy. They're small, but it gives me like a finger hold, a place to push with a palm and also to hold with my forefinger. And it gives me a nice little sanding block. I need sanding block for small things. Um, the other thing is you could do the same thing with a popsicle stick, an ice cream stick, whatever you want to call it. You can also use emery boards for the same thing. I also like to use these sanding sponges. They're really nice for when you're getting into irregular shapes, but these are, these are nice to use. And then also, um, I can even make one out of this, which is nice because, and I'll show you. So I can take a small strip of double sided here. We cut off a piece. And just tape it on. I can be that way. Sway. All right. So. Just like that, take my double-sided on the sandpaper here, okay, and then take my painter's tape and put it on the block, same I did before, just like this, and that way I could reuse this block if I if I need to change out the sandpaper. It's not a problem. I'll show you in a minute. So I'm going to take this now and remove the backing from the double side. Just like that. Stick it down like that. All right. Trim it away. Trim it away. All right, so there we go. We've got a, another sanding block that's a little triangle piece that I cut off something. I use my little pieces for all kinds of things, but this is nice because that gives me another finger hold and I can, I can sand really nice with that, right? So your imagination is really, is, you know, it's unlimited in these sanding blocks you can make. And then, like I said, these are used double-sided sticky tape. So let's say that my, my sandpaper is worn out. I can just take that, pull it right off, and do the process again, make a new one. Okay? So the other thing I want to show you is a way of, if I've got to sand something and I want it to be still, um, but I don't really have a way to clamp it, you know, maybe it's too small of a piece and I want to sand it or plane it or or what have you, I can take my piece of painter's tape, just like this, all right, and I can take that painter's tape and stick it down on my surface here, just like this, and I'll trim it off. Okay, just like that. And then I will take the piece. I guess I could have made that bigger, but I can take the piece then I want to um, work on and put a piece of painter's tape on the back side of it. 
the side I'm not going to work on, right? Just like this. All right. And then I will take some CA glue. I could do this with double-sided tape also, um, but I'm going to show you some stuff with the CA glue. Oh, I'm running out of this bottle. Okay. So I take the CA glue on one side of the blue tape, and then I get my activator. Bam. Again, I don't want that near it, so I'm going to spray some activator on this. And then I'll just take that, that CA glue and paper, a tape, and stick it down. All right? Just like that. Okay. Just like that. Now, I can sand on this. I'm not going to move, right? I can plane on it. Let me give it, uh, let me give it a camphor on this. Come on here. Right? I'm not really holding it. I'm just stabilizing myself. But you can see what you can do with that. Right? Same thing on that side. So I just put a nice chamfer on there, just like that, however far down I want to go. Same thing this way. All right? And then when I'm ready to pull it up, it comes right off because the tape is not stuck to the, and then the super glue or the CA glue is holding the two pieces of tape together. So then I was able to work on this piece of wood and not have it move around on me. So that's nice also. So some things you can do with CA glue, tape, double-sided sticky tape, small little blocks of wood. So there you have it. That's today's workshop wisdom. If you have any suggestions or tips that you know of that you would like to share with the community, let me know. I'll, I'll mention your name and give you credit for it. But I'm looking all for all kinds of workshop wisdom, some tips, tricks, and hacks that we can all use in the workshop and, and make workshop easier, quicker, time-tested things that you know about. And they can be little things. They can be big things. But just let me know what you, what you think. And uh, I hope you like today's workshop wisdom. And again, I want to say God bless and happy making.